Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. So since the last episode, it hasn't been all that long. Uh, basically just while the video was rendering uh, for the last episode, now I finished up editing, I, I set up a bit of automation, additional automation. I went ahead and plugged up uh, our crushing line uh, and added quite a few recipes down here uh, to these various different lines so now we can order like coarse lapis compound we can order steel we can order nether quartz dust blaze powder obsidian dust i gotta wall this in and put torches all around it uh cold coke dust iron dust lapis dust and then i also ordered us up a bunch of stuff which actually it looks like a lot of stuff it didn't take but like a couple minutes because like i said our automation it works i just have to run and pick everything up it's a little bit uh, obnoxious to use to some degree but i did order us up a bunch of stuff and this is just stuff from my inventory that we may end up making use of today i don't know we'll see i'm probably going to increase the size of our pressure chamber before too terribly long but um anyways uh you can see we're backed up on we've got 32,000 molten plastic here we have 12,000 molten plastic here uh, so that's setting pretty nice uh, at the moment now what we're going to do first and foremost is let's go ahead because of course we're going to be working towards the assembly line uh, but to do that of course we have a little bit of stuff to do it's not going to take that long uh, first up, we are going to want to get a charging station. Uh, also, I did get the stuff made up for us to make 16 machine frames because we're going to need those today uh, as well. I'll just throw them back in there. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a charging station. Let's just plug this up. Temporary. We're going to put it right here. Then we're going to get ourselves our Amadron tablet. Let's go ahead and get ourselves an air canister. Let's get our GPS tool and then we're gonna need seven plastic sheets we've got so much plastic and it's so easy to make I don't know if we should worry about cooling right now I'm gonna say no and so easy to make a whole bunch more I went ahead and filled up our one tank with crude oil we will get to the cooling but we'll probably just wait until we do like an automatic setup for that I think and my plan is we'll probably finish out this week with like the next episode being uh, kind of another sort of tech episode uh, before we switch back over to magic and it'll be basically just be us getting to enjoy uh, our sorting system working again and doing a bit of automation and probably playing a little bit with power uh, i think i don't need that anymore uh, now let's go ahead and get our amadron tablet so there's that and then we can just drop this into here to get it charged up because it is going to need some uh some pressure in it so because in order to get our UV light box, we're going to have to get ourselves a PCB blueprint. Oh, let me throw all that in there too. The omnidirectional hopper is way better because you can see it keeps the gate open until it dumps all of its items in there. Uh, whereas those item pipes, they just weren't that great. So, But it's going to load up the tar. We'll actually get to show you guys it crafting, you know, if you haven't seen it before. But uh, Pneumatocraft's been around forever, but... Uh, it's and it's been nice because it's been one of those mods that progressively gets better and better and let me go ahead and grab like four blaze cakes and here we go it's gonna fire up more i love it i mean i'm still kind of moving over the eggs and stuff we're gonna add ostriches soon i was actually going to do that but then you know because i was doing the whole mob farm thing and then everything kind of died on me and it kind of messed up my plans changed up my plans a little bit there so we should end up with 33 yeah i should stop crafting here actually my basin had the uh, last episode you may have noticed it had the wrong output for a minute there and i had to change it whenever i went to make blaze cakes because it started making blaze cake bases uh, when i pulled out blaze cakes for this so and then we can go ahead and get our etching tank and uh then let's go get and we might be doing some quests out of order. We'll get it all caught up and organized. I know, let's see, the Pneumatocraft quest over here. I know I haven't picked up a bucket and I haven't made four thermopneumatic processing plants. I'm not worried about it. We'll get it. Uh, it's kind of blocking up some of this stuff. 
and that's for the logistics system, which is actually really powerful, and we'll probably be doing a bit with the logistics drones. Uh, you know, we've used them in past series before, and they're even better these days than they used to be, so. Okay, now let's grab our Amatron tablet. I'm going to set it up right here, and then we're going to shift right click that chest, and if we take a look at the PCB blueprint, uh, this costs eight emeralds. And there's actually a lot of really nice things that we can get through the Amadron tablet that, that are added within this pack. Like if we open this up now, uh, for example, there's nether botanical surveys, in mineral surveys, in botanical surveys, uh, atom mineral surveys, which I know can give Nebu and relic ore and stuff. Uh, so definitely worth doing. And we can sell various different liquids. I'm not going to sell any, probably, because emeralds are so easy, you know. And engineer school project, engineering school upgrades for the medium and heavy machinery. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. But anyways, we're going to be getting the PCB blueprint. Let's go ahead and just right-click that, and we're going to say place order. And after a little bit... Oh, wow, the pressure in this dropped. We're going to be using this again, but I'm going to keep it basically in here for right now but there we go that's a lot quicker than it used to be you can see the amadron delivery drone came in and it picked up my emeralds and then after just a little bit there'll be a delivery drone that comes in used to they would fly in real slow oh yeah they're like they teleport in so they don't need skylight anymore uh, but they gave us our pcb blueprint so there we go and then we can use that to get our UV light box. And then let's go ahead, toss in all of that. Gunpowder, rotten flesh, spider eyes. We're also going to need a bucket of molten plastic. And this is going to allow us to... I did put the speed... Yeah, I did put the speed upgrades in there. This is going to allow us to make our first bucket of etching acid. So, let's go ahead and take our UV light box. Uh, we'll just plug this in right here. It sounds good. And then we're going to put our etching tank uh, right over here for now. Um, I'm not going to be doing the temperature thing with it at the moment. But let's go ahead and just dump that into there. So, we've got a bucket of etching acid. Now, if you want to, you can uh, feed this with heat. But it will, if you do that, it will um, actually consume your etching acid slowly but uh I'll, i'm gonna wait to do that until we have it automated uh, now at this point we got that we got that uh, then we need to get ourselves some empty pcbs and these are just going to be plastic sheets redstone torches and nuggets so let's go ahead let's do uh let's do a few batches of these so we'll go ahead and drop that in Let's go ahead and fire that up too. I'm going to have to start using all this kerosene and gas. I am going to be using some of it for lubricant here shortly. I'm not sure if I want to make another thermopneumatic for that. Or if I want to use the same thermopneumatic and repurpose it for now. They weren't that expensive. Let's go ahead and get some more coal in that because it was just about out. Uh, and then let's go ahead grab our empty PCBs. And then we're going to throw these in, and we're going to leave the threshold at 100%, just because I like to be safe. And we're going to drop that in. Basically, if it fails, then you kind of have to restart the whole process again, uh, because you get the failed PCB, and then you have to smelt that, uh, and then basically redo it all. Now, let's go ahead and get ourselves these basic logistical transporters. And we're going to make ourselves a really nice pile of junk here. I think we can input through the top. Oh, I'm noticing it slows down substantially at like 40%. Used to, it was it was pretty steady across the board. Um, that kind of changes things, I feel like. It makes me wonder, do we actually want to go all the way up, or do we just want to go to like, say, 40%? Because then another one comes in. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just do... 46 percent and then we throw this in here and this is going to start etching and we can we can put a bunch of uh empty pcbs into this at once now like i said you can speed it up with heat but uh i think it's over 100 degrees maybe it says in here 
No, over 50 degrees. Yeah, about 30%. It drops. Like the first like 10% is like zoom. And then can we go ahead? I know this is a beautiful pile of crap right now, but. And actually, I guess there's no reason. Let me pull that etching acid out. Let's just move this over there. And we'll just do it like that. And that way it can just feed them over and then hopefully we'll have some PCBs. Some of them will say, uh, will fail, but I think 40%, it's pretty good odds. And it, it just seems like it gets it like a whole lot slower after a bit. And that's all newer features, by the way, like pretty much the way this whole UV light box works now is uh, new. You used to you throw in one PCB at a time and you pulled it out whenever you wanted to kind of a thing. And it was steady progress across the board. But so used to, it was like, go for a hundred percent, you know? Uh, but now I think, I think maybe with the way it's set up and the way the etching tank is set up, instead of having to drop them in world, you know, used to, you had to drop them in world on them sit there. Um, I think it's probably better just to shoot for maybe a lower percentage and play the odds, at least for now, maybe, maybe down the road, we speed up the UV light box and stuff like that. Then yeah, it'd probably just go for a hundred percent, but. All right, we're about to find out if our very first one at 46%, if it succeeds or it fails. It succeeded. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that. And then we have to assemble it. This is an unassembled. Uh, so to assemble this, we're going to need lead wire. Uh, we're going to need basic processors. We're going to need capacitors. We're going to need transistors. We're actually going to need a fair amount of these, these, these. Uh, and then, of course, our lead wire as well. So let me go ahead... And capacitors are just nuggets, slime balls, plastic sheets. Transistors are nuggets, redstone plastic sheets. And then basic processors are flux dust. We're going to need 10 coins. I'm going to need to make pneumostatic. Okay. And get that lead wire running. And then for the basic processors, uh, processor binding. Let's go ahead and just get 10 sets. All right. So there's 80 processor binding. There's our numis, numismatic die, uh, and it's going to be 10 coins. All right, so our lead wire is done. Let's grab that. Let's go ahead and throw in our numismatic die. Get that going. Okay, and I got enough of this to run half of what I'm planning on running. Uh, so let's go ahead, take 30 silicon, 30 flux, 30 10 coins, and 30 processor binding, because uh, we're going to make these raw basic processors and actually I wonder if it wouldn't be better maybe in this case to put the speed there we go yeah that's a lot better I think I think that's gonna make it faster overall because the door opening and shutting yeah I mean it's slow but that's okay we're gonna be getting into some upgrades though what does it take to uh... oh glycerol okay I don't know if we'll get into the fluid mixer today but all right, here comes our 10 coins. There we go. They've already all crafted. They don't take much pressure at all. And there we go. There's our refined storage raw basic processors. Of course, we're not going to be using it for refined storage. But uh, Oh, we got five failed PCBs and one unassembled PCB. Bad luck, but that's okay. So all we got to do is just smelt these and then throw them back in. That's why we start them early and make a few. I'm probably going to make some more PCBs here in just a moment, but uh, those are done. I can go ahead and queue up these other 30. It's probably going to be more than what we need. This is more like a, we were going with refined storage kind of a thing, but that's okay. I can grab those, 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 those. Let me have these. Honestly, I'm, I'm probably be worth it to change this to an omnidirectional hopper, but this does fine on the output. The output, I don't mind it being slow because on the output, for example, I'm only outputting 30 items, whereas I'm inputting 120, you know, uh, but I may end up changing it. We'll see. But then we can take these raw basic processors, put them in the, into the multi-servo with the numismatic, and it's going to make us our basic processors. Got another failed PCB. It is not like 40% threshold. It's like you're being way too cheap on it. I may end up I may end up bumping it up because 40% once or twice is not bad, but 40% a couple times is gonna add up pretty quick. Capacitors are two. 
slime balls, plastic sheets, and then after that we're going to have this, this, this. And this is going to make us our capacitors and our transistors. How's this doing? Not bad. We'll go ahead and grab that. So there's 20 capacitors. And uh, for the PCBs, it's going to be two of these per. And then one lead wire, one basic processor. So let's go ahead, dump all of that in there. And that can start depositing those. Should be getting our last item. There we go. Uh, pressure's really low in this, though. What does it need for the PCB? A 4.0 bar. Okay. All right, now while we're waiting for the pressure to build up to do our uh, PCBs, let's go ahead. Uh, we're going to be making... Uh, well, actually, let me grab these mechanical crafters because we're going to have to craft these through mechanical crafters. But before we do, we're going to need to make ourselves some pneumatic cylinders. Uh, and these take cannon barrels. I didn't get enough of these, I don't think... Maybe it was 10, but I was thinking it was a little bit more. We'll, we'll find out. Um, I think I was getting them, and then I think I got sidetracked. But let's go ahead. There's four of those. I'm going to get turbine blades in just a moment. But uh, let's go ahead. We'll do the assembly platform first, I think. Let me get some more plastic. And I'm going to grab another bucket. This actually takes quite a bit of plastic. I was thinking, well, I probably got enough, but, uh, because we had so much backed up in there, I was like, oh, that'll get us close, but no, nah, not really. I didn't really, like, sit down and do the math on the plastic or anything. I was just like, oh, that looks good. Uh, and then I'll probably plan on automating it, honestly, just because we'll end up probably wanting a few of these setups. It would just make life a little bit easier for us. And then it's the reinforced stone slabs. Yeah. Some, some of them are like stone brick slabs, and some of them are stone slabs, and so on, so. Okay, there's our assembly platform. And we're going to need the full assembly system today. Now, for the import and export, we're basically going to be making two. Um, we're not going to worry about making the export, because you can change between them. And we're just going to set up this pattern right here, because uh, it'll be kind of universal. Do we need a, yeah, we need a pneumatic dynamo for each of these. Okay. Well, let me at least go set up our mechanical crafters. But we really need a couple really big pressure chambers. Uh, just so our pressure is a bit more stable. And we need more, we need the advanced liquid compressor too. But we'll get to that. Let's see, for the import, I guess we'll start with the imports. Uh, pneumatic cylinders, the brass hands. And then we just need the pneumatic cylinder, or pneumatic uh, dynamo, or whatever it's called. Yeah, pneumatic dynamo. Uh, oh, they're done. There we go. There is our printed circuit boards. Let's go ahead now uh, to get our pneumatic dynamos. Basically, all we're going to be missing is the turbine rotors which requires the blades, which requires invar plates, flux dust, and redstone servos, which I can order these now. But uh, and how many of these are we going to need? I'm going to try to just make all these in bulk. Uh, we're going to be needing 30 of these. Okay, easy enough. That's why it's nice that I can just order, like, invar and stuff. I mean, it's not, like, super fast till we get machine upgrades, but it's fine. <laughs> And it will be a little bit faster once we get the drawer controllers because we'll have those extract speed upgrades. Which technically I can order the servos, but honestly, because I've got to craft the lead rods right now. Just until I get the, the thermal stuff all plugged up. And the only reason I haven't done that yet is because it is going to require some power. Uh, because I think we're going to use XNet for that, like another system. Technically we could do it all through the same system. It's just a little bit cleaner to do little smaller systems, I think. Because I know in some past series I had huge XNet systems and I'd have comments like, I don't even know what's going on in there. Because it would be like so many things and like managing, like the one on Stacia, for example, was massive. And the one on Enigmatica 2 for the farms was really big. But I know we're going to need more plastic sheets, so I'm going to go ahead, keep this running. There's a couple other things that we need to make. Once we make the turbine blades, we'll do that. Just a one bar, okay. They're probably going to be pretty cheap little crafts. 
All right, now while those are running, I think we're gonna need uh, this right here through the thermoneumatic processor. Let's see, we're gonna need the lubricants. This takes 500 degrees Celsius, but I think we can pull that off with the, because uh, I think this reaches temperatures that high. Yeah, we'll be good. Uh, now, technically, if we had the us, actually, well, I could put it in here. It'd be a really a little bit awkward to get it. Uh, well, okay, I think I've got an idea. No, you can you can transfer heat and pressure through these if they're like butted up against each other. But the way I have this laid out right now, it's not really optimal uh, for doing that. But uh, we'll figure out something here. But for the lubricant, it's gonna be uh, our diesel. And some redstone through the thermal pneumatic to get our lubricant. And we need 8,000 millibockets. Yeah, these are these are done. They're just pulling out right now. 30 turbine blades. And I'm going to go ahead and order the stuff for another uh, thermal pneumonic, pneumatic uh, processing plant. All right, so there is our turbine blades. We'll go ahead, combine these together. There's 10 turbine rotors. And then we can get our five pneumatic dynamos. So there's that. And that put a huge dent in our printed circuit boards. But luckily, the only other thing that needs the printed circuit board is the control. Uh, and it takes three of them. But we'll go ahead, get this going. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and make another one. And the brass hand. There we go. <clears throat> there is both of our assembly IO units. Then we're going to turn one of these into an import. Well, let's go ahead and get another thermal pneumatic processing plant. And let me grab some of this redstone here. I'm going to need eight. I'm just going to be moving the liquid over via bucket because we only need eight of these right now for the lubricant. Uh, so what we're going to do... I'm going to lose a little bit of pressure here, but let me do that. We lost a little bit, not much. But that way this can get heat from that one. Uh, so if we do, well, let me go ahead real quick and let me get, uh, let's see, for the drill, it's going to be eight buckets of lubricant. Oh, actually, I can just buy the lubricant. I'm not going to because it's so easy to make it, but... We could buy it, uh, which is going to be eight buckets of diesel. Okay, so there's our eight buckets of diesel. We'll go ahead and throw in our redstone. Uh, we need 100 degrees for this, which is fine. This should shoot up pretty quickly. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and take the lubricant out of this. And then let's get our block of diamond. And we can just toss this into there and this should start running we need a 4.5 bar so we got to wait for this to go up just a little bit no pressure's at 4.5 now oh but my blaze cake wore off okay and now we should have enough uh enough pressure ish i mean it's gonna be right on the cusp so i don't know if we're gonna be able to run it without bumping that pressure up slightly yeah, we may have to go into the danger zone just slightly. Uh, let's do that. Let's say you're always on. There we go. That's going to start running, and we're just going to kind of watch this for just a moment. We can always uh, turn it off if we need to, you know. Probably once it gets up to about 4.7. Uh, we could shut it off, but it should be finished by then, uh, before then. So, there we go. There's our diamond drill bit, and then we're just going to set this back to low signal. So, it's going to stop running. How much? We still have 4.7. <laughs> that refined fuel lasts forever. The thing is, now we can start using our fuels that we're creating over here uh, to power it. But... The refined fuel that we made up, like last episode, it lasts forever. Forever and ever and ever. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead, let's grab our Amadron. Um, and 
if we take a look at the assembly programs, there's three here. I think I've got enough to order all three. So let's go ahead and just place that order there. But there's a couple more cannon barrels. There's a couple more pneumatic cylinders. And we'll go ahead and run that out. And that's going to get us our drill. There we go. And if we take a look, our assembly programs have been delivered. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to leave them in this chest. Actually, I'll probably put all my assembly stuff in that chest for right now. Oh, which actually the controller doesn't take the pneumatic cylinders, so we've got enough because we did the assembly lasers. Now the other thing, we're going to come to that here in just a moment. Um, and then beyond that, I just need to get the monitor real quick. All right, so let's get the machine base. And then we're going to get our information screen. And then our monitor. Oh, and this is actually backed up on gasoline, kerosene. So I'll have to get that out here in just a moment. But yeah, and actually, I'll definitely have to do it because I don't have any more plastic. And we're going to need a little bit more plastic here shortly. So I'm going to have to bucket that out here in just a second. Our monitor, there we go. And that'll craft out our assembly controller. At this point, I'm going to go ahead, because I'm not in a big rush for these, I'm just going to go ahead and bump my threshold up to 100%. We'll see how long it takes. Uh, okay, so for our assembly laser, this is going to require just an energizing rod. It can be any tier. Uh, so we're probably just going to go with the basic. Uh, quartz and rich iron is mixing in the heater or just like this how much i'm gonna need nine it's mostly gonna be a bunch of wires and stuff we are gonna have to get the very basics of power let's see test the coil we're gonna need a whole lot of copper coil blocks and hv capacitors which i think are just tiered up oh we do need a bucket of etching acid for the lv capacitors interesting uh, and then some fluid cells i just need two of these for the tesla coils okay uh and then i've got to set up a couple deployers so give me just a minute here this is just plastic sheets with aluminum plates dielectric paste signal we've already got dielectric paste over there so it's not a big deal just two two crafts of these that shouldn't be too bad on us there's our quartz enriched iron tesla coil takes two hv but each hv takes two mv and each mv takes two lv uh, so it's a little bit <laughs> It's not actually expensive. Like, our automation is blowing through, like, all the plates and things that we need. So that's not really a big deal. Um, I am going to need a lot of cured rubber, but uh, that's okay. We can take care of that. But, yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of materials, but honestly, we're at a pretty good point, I think. Honestly, this pretty pipe system, I can't imagine. This would be, this would be rough, for sure, <laughs> doing it without, our like, our pretty pipe system. Uh, I know it's it's kind of on crutches right now, um, as far as the automation goes, because like all this stuff is actually done, but it thinks it's not. I'm ready to get this uh, rubber completely automated, because that's going to make our lives a lot easier. All right, so there's eight of those. All right, at this point, we're ready to go ahead. Let's set up a mechanical press here. We're going to have it at the very end, and I did rearrange. So construction paste is at the end, and I laid this out. Uh, so the aluminum plates are over there, the dielectric paste, the signal plates. Uh, now let's go ahead and just toss in a couple plastic sheets. And nah, it's overstressed. Okay. Um, I'm, per I'm not going to leave this plugged up for sure. And it means our deployers over here. It doesn't want those either. There we go. Those are done. Uh, so what I'm going to do for now, let me go ahead and add that into there. And I think what I'm going to have to do for now is clip this off. And we'll clip this off. Yeah, I can run those two uh, without the deployer. That's fine. I need to add more power to this. That's fine. We'll get to that. Running everything at high at max speed, it it puts a lot of strain on 
stuff. That won't be a big concern until we start into power. Uh, then we'll be making a lot of that. But today I just need a little bit. Okay, we're ready at this point to go ahead. Let's make our fluid cells. Thank goodness those stack. And then let's go ahead, grab all these buckets of etching acid. And let's get ourselves some LV capacitors. And we're going to want eight of these. I think I've got enough of everything there we go and of course at this point I've got everything for this except for the Tesla coil uh, so I just need the capacitors here so go 36 of those it's gonna have to craft up a bunch of electrum at this point uh, and then everything else we should be good on let me go ahead and get a bunch of planks so I can make up some more treated wood a stack of that and we'll go ahead and get another stack of treated wood. We're going to be automating that very, very soon. For sure, just because I know we're going to need a lot of it down the road. So, All right, so let's go ahead and get ourselves our MV capacitors. And then we're going to need the HV capacitors. And then we're going to need the Tesla coil. And then we're going to need the energizing rod. The basic energizing rod. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will say before we start into power, we're totally going to automate capacitors because we're going to need a bunch of them, it seems like. Let's go ahead, craft that out. There we go. There's our assembly laser. And at this point, we're, I think, pretty much done with these mechanical crafters. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and break these down. I need more flywheels, though. I mean, I guess really at this point, I don't know. I mean, I could convert them over to blast furnaces. It would make a big difference, but I don't know. We'll see. Or I might just set up new flywheels that are blast furnaces. Oh, wow. We're about to be moving into nuclear physics already. Like, we're passing magic. We're almost to the last tier, for some of this stuff at least. There we go. Quest completed. Then they want us to get the machine frame, which, hey, we're going to be going for that. All right, so let's go ahead. The assembly controller is where pressure needs to come in at. Uh, probably, let me just go ahead and get a few more crafts of pressure tubes. Running low on compressed iron, but I can make more easy enough. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is... Such a mess... Uh, I think I'm going to run this, and then we're going to have the assembly controller setting here. Uh, the assembly platform here, and basically all this has to just be linked, is all. Uh, we'll have the import there, the export can be here. The laser and the drill. Yeah, it should be good. And then we're just going to go ahead and plug this line up. There you go. And that way this can start getting pressure and I'll never be able to escape. Alright, yeah, that's shooting up in pressure. Great. Okay, so we got that in place. At this point, if we take a look at the drawer controller, now we're actually turning our attention over to what we're actually after. All this stuff is I actually have the aluminum sheet metal. I've got the drawers, so it's not a problem. Uh, the processor, we're going to need the smart chest, uh, which is going to be the printed circuit boards. I'm going to have to make some more of these. I've got two, but I'm actually going to be shooting for three drawer controllers today. Uh, the logic units, we're going to get to that in just a moment. And really beyond that, I mean, these are cheap at this point. I just got to make up some stuff. Uh, but the machine frame... Uh, this isn't difficult, but uh, it's going to be assembly program laser. But there's a couple steps that come before that for the rough machine frame. Uh, basically, it's going to be machine base, which we made these earlier. Uh, I am going to have to make some more advanced PCBs to pull off three of these. Uh, and then we need the coated machine frame top, which is molten plastic, with the rough machine frame top. Which is machine frames ran through on the drill 
Uh, two of those makes a rough machine frame top. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's grab our drill program. And like I said, we're going to be going for three of these. So we're going to go ahead and do six machine frames today. Uh, let me get a chest. We'll just set it up right here. And we're going to put our program in as drill. All right. So now if this gets uh, materials that it can craft with, like for example, the machine frame, you can see this is going to start going. It's going to be a little slow. Uh, do we want to steal the speed upgrades for at least a little bit? Maybe. Let's go ahead and throw those in there. That makes it a little bit faster. Uh, so it's going to grab two of those machine frames. I love watching this thing run. It's always so exciting. And I can't, I'm, I'm glad there's so many recipes for this because usually it's one of those things in most packs where you use it like once or twice or for maybe one or two recipes, but it's not used a lot. Or they give you uh, some replacement like five seconds after you make it. I'm really excited there's a lot of recipes for this because I want a lot of these like encased in glass in places. So. And now that's going to grab the finished product and it's going to put it over in this chest at this point. So easy enough. Now for the next part, these actually aren't that expensive at this point. Uh, we're going to have to coat them in molten plastic. So let's just go ahead and grab three buckets of that molten plastic uh, and we'll dump it into the us this is our empty one and let's grab that rough machine machine frame top throw it into there and uh oh is this uh and it needs 1600 degrees celsius i'll tell you what i think we could probably use mechanism um i'm not for sure because it doesn't show up in the heat but mechanism does produce heat and i believe it's compatible with pneumaticraft and considering it was used, like some of the mechanism stuff was used to make the pneumaticraft stuff, I'm going to say this is probably the intended method for that. Because uh, the only liquids and like stuff that shows up in that that we can make is... It's pretty out of our reach at the moment. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a couple of these. We only need one for this, but we're going to need one uh, here shortly, so... We'll go ahead and get that ordered. Hopefully it can get it out. It may not be able to. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, it looks like it sent the tar and ectoplasm over. Yeah, see it's not getting that. I'm just going to throw it in there manually for now. Uh, and then we'll toss that in there. Let me get a couple pieces of cold coke. Actually, there's cold, cold coke right next to me there. But... Alright, so that's done. Let's go ahead and grab that. And then we can, uh, we're going to take one of these and dump it into the system here. And then let's go ahead and get our kilns from environmental. And we'll come back to this smoldering lapis here in just a little bit. I got to make more blast bricks. It's fine. This should be the last cycle for it. There we go. All right, so now we can get our fuel wood heater. All right, so I think what we're going to do, let's get ourselves, that should be fine. Uh, I want to go ahead and just make up a bit of blaze mesh. That might be fine. Yeah, it should be fine. This stuff's got pretty long burn time. And it's only 500 degree temperature on the block heat. Oh, it actually turns into glowstone. That's nifty. But we're not going to be insulating with it or anything. <clears throat> we're going to be, I think, insulating with magma. I mean, there's better options, but magma's got pretty decent temperature. And it's got pretty good heat capacity, so it's not going to burn out super fast. Uh, so we're going to go with that. And this had finished running. It was out of uh, oil. I moved this over, but I think I'm going to move it further out. Which, actually, I've got this one. I'll just set... Yeah, I'll just set this one up, and I'll put that back. And then I can start pulling the pressure out from there. Because I'd like a little bit more space for this, because we're going to have to get pretty good temperature. And I am going to have to wait for the pressure to build up a little bit, but 
Uh, let's do... I wonder if I could do the blaze burner at the same time. Like heat it with the heat it with the blaze burner too, uh, but we'll do the fuel wood heater setting here, just attached directly to the thermo pneumatic. See that's going up. So we throw the blaze mesh there. We wrap this up in blaze mesh or uh, magma blocks and we throw that in yeah we're shooting up now okay <clears throat> which I don't think I'm about to have enough pressure let's set this to always let me go grab some more blaze cakes too and this will work for now later on we would probably want like compressed steel blocks or something like that that's a little bit better insulated uh, are we going to make it? Or do I need something slightly hotter? Yeah, it's hanging at 1577 right now. Uh, okay. I could either, I mean, I could do another fuel wood. 1578. I mean, it's steadily going up. There's actually some stuff later on that's going to make this so much easier, but... Uh, let's go ahead. Ooh. I need to actually set this to low signal. Otherwise, bad things are going to end up happening. Oh, actually, it crafted. Huh. I guess when these when these kicked off... Uh, okay, I think I know why. I think it was uh, ignoring the heat from the fuel wood with these burning. I was thinking if they were burning, they'd be a little bit better. But I think if they're down because they're pretty insulated so yeah just the blaze mesh uh, seems to do the trick now if i remove those you'll notice the temperature bottoms out uh, it's because they're actually a really good insulator but there is our coated machine frame tops so uh, i'm gonna remove all this i I don't foresee myself needing this. I know there's some other stuff that's going to need high heat lighter, but not right now. So don't have them burning and it works out better. Uh, but definitely want to insulate your fuel wood. I doubt, I doubt you'd be able to hit it without insulating it, you know, with magma or something. It doesn't have to be anything really fancy. Uh, and, you know, you don't have to run it on something fancy. Like I don't have blaze blood, but blaze mesh is not as good, but it does pretty good. Uh, but if you have blaze blood, it would be even better. So uh, we'll probably set up for that at some point, but not not today. Okay, so now that we've got that, uh, we can throw that in the mixer with the machine base and invar plates. So let's go ahead and get three machine bases. And then is this one heated? It's heated, yeah. Not that, that. Okay, what am I missing? Oh, it's compacting and not a mixer. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's just toss down that, that, that. Wait, what did you do? Nothing. Okay. There we go. Oh, it was that running. There is our rough machine frames. And then the rough machine frames basically just have to go through a laser program to make our actual machine frames. A little bit of a process. We'll throw those into there. Let me grab our speed upgrades. And then while that's running, uh, let's take a look at this. It's going to be one bucket of water. And let's go ahead and add a bucket of water to that along with our smoldering lapis and we'll get that ran real quick that's going to give us upgrade matrixes this is still going okay uh, and these upgrade matrixes we can uh, combine these with a book in the alloy kiln to get our engineers blueprints i wish i could order through corporea so bad right now I keep wanting to, like, to reach for it, you know, but, um, uh, then it's like, oh yeah, I can't do that. Look at those little machine frames. 
they weren't too bad. Um, I mean, we had to go through basically the majority of tech to get over to these, but not that bad. Then we can drop these into the alloy kiln. Let me grab like some of this cold coke or something. There we go. Engineer's blueprints. Woohoo. And there's our machine frames. Woohoo. Okay. Now. Now we've got that. And that's probably the biggest amount of work out of all this. Uh, for the vacuum tubes, we just need to get an engineer's workbench. Which is pretty cheap. Let me get that together real quick. Alright, so there is our engineer's workbench. And we'll just set this down right here for now. Drop in our blueprint. And then we're going to toss in our stuff here. We're going to get our vacuum tubes. So there's that. And then I've just got to get some really basic stuff together at this point. Uh, six circuit back planes, six printed circuit boards, uh, six omnidirectionals, six reinforced chests. And I think my PCBs, yeah, they're done. Okay, that is perfect. Okay, so let me get that stuff together real quick, and then we'll be all set. Okay, I'm getting the last bit of our uh, circuit boards done at the moment. Uh, let me go ahead and throw in that, and then I just need the 16 transistors. And while we're waiting for that to come through, let's go ahead... Hmm. Oh yeah, I only made... I need to make three more. It's crazy, I did six blocks. Well, it was 12 blocks of compressed iron. That's all I got left after that. It took a lot of compressed iron. Of course, compressed iron is, like, uber cheap at the moment, so. And I made up a bunch of silicon, and my system's been like, hey, we can make dielectric paste now. So it's just been ordering, like, lots of dielectric paste, which has been getting stuck, of course, but not for much longer. There is our six logic units. Okay, it's about to be there. Uh, you know, it's funny. We only use, like, two buckets of this refined fuel. Like, it's so good. I made a bunch thinking, well, we'll probably need it. I mean, we did quite a bit of pneumatic craft. It's been running, you know, pretty much nonstop for a while. And, uh, yeah. It just, uh, it just lasts forever. <laughs> I'm going to turn that back on. I had it turned off to speed this up a little bit here. <clears throat> There we go. There's our printed circuit boards. And we've got a few spare. I think I made eight. So we'll have a couple spares for maybe making PCBs or something if that comes up. Okay. The time has finally come. After quite a bit of work, there is our smart chest. There is our processors. There we go. There's our processors. And then let me go ahead and get our drawers. There's that. And here we go. Three drawer controllers. <laughs> Quest completed. Look at all of them. And this will be for this network, the B area, and then the mob farm. And I've got a bit of a bit of organizing and, and moving things around. Uh, honestly, the comb storage is probably going to get moved over to the B network, and the B network is going to get changed up a little bit. Uh, as far as that goes, because it was kind of like a... And there's a server restart. Right as I get it. Bah. Okay. Well, I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to do a little bit of organizing at this point. Set these up. And at this point, I've got to go through, basically, and break down all these drawers. Get rid of all the pretty pipes behind them. Get rid of all the corporeal sparks on them. And then it would basically be moving to one pipe... One corporeal spark, just on the drawer net, uh, on the drawer controller, and then uh, in the process, I've been kind of waiting for this point where I have to kind of break all my drawers down to do a little bit of reorganizing too, because uh, some of the stuff that we have in drawers doesn't necessarily need to be in a drawer, you know, but some of it does. So I do a little bit of reorganizing there. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I've been getting a 
bit of sorting done for our system. Everything, all the corporea sparks are down. Uh, all the pipes are down. You can see we walked back here and there's nothing. I, I did have to shift this crafting terminal. I mean, I could move this, switch it, but uh, I do have a plan for right there. So it's not really a big deal. Uh, but I noticed that the crafting terminal, if it's sitting right here and the pipes underneath it, uh, even if you clip off this pipe, uh, it still sees it as being connected for some reason. Uh, and I didn't want the high priority module. Uh, but I haven't got these these drawers just, uh, I haven't got them sorted just yet. But I, get, I did get some of the stuff sorted out of them uh, since the last cut. And uh, I've got a few things in here. And actually most of this is stuff that I just added and stuff uh, that I got to sit up. Uh, and I threw a lot of redstone in there and I haven't got upgrades in that. I did make some storage upgrades, but I didn't make redstone. And then I ran out of redstone and ran too much of it. In this room back here, I did remove the drawers, added a few crates for different things, um, but did remove the drawers back here. I'm still kind of in the middle of that. And I'm actually here very, very soon. I'm, I've actually almost got it ran over. Uh, all these chests that run our corporeal system through the middle are going to be gone because I'm running them around the edge. Uh, I've been working on that. But over here, uh, you can see my nice little bees. I did get sidetracked with a little bit of decorating. so Because uh, I was trying to run my corporeal sparks and I was trying to think of different ideas for how to run them. And I'm running them through tinted jars on this, this one. Uh, just this one. Uh, and you can see corporea. Kind of, it's taken a while because I'm like, well, what am I going to put in these areas? And so I'm having to kind of plan ahead a little bit. These blocks may change. Uh, but of course, I'm trying to run this corporea bit uh, across here. And then over here, we've got bees. I've got to set up uh, basically two more layers. And i got to bring this, uh, uh, these stair bits out a little bit. Uh, but that's something that I'm working on. Uh, and then over here, I've, I've added a few more recipes for various things. Like we can order tier one and tier two crafting upgrades and just different things. And I've got to remove these drawers. I'm waiting till I get my corporea ran around. Um, and then I'll, then I'll disconnect it. Which actually I think now I can because this one is close enough uh, at this point. I just wanted to make sure I still had access to uh, like my stone and stuff like that. And I'm about to go underneath the pyramid and light up and block off. To keep these mobs from getting under my pyramid because they're driving me insane uh but one thing i did want to show you uh in particular let's uh we're probably going to be harassed a little bit but over here let me deal with him uh over here you'll notice that uh there's actually two different lines that connect to the pipe pressurizer this one is actually our main line uh and it comes around and comes up right here and plugs into the drawer controller so that our main uh, pretty pipes line can access that drawer controller and our corporea system can as well but it runs up through there and then you're going to notice another line here that's plugging into that drawer controller uh, it runs off over there it does plug into this pipe pressurizer just to get things moving a little bit faster uh, but our honeycombs this way i don't have to worry about them going into places uh, because the way I had them wired up before, anytime I plugged up like anything that didn't have a filter and I wasn't really, really careful, shoom, here'd come like a ton of honeycombs. Uh, so I just ran it out as a separate line coming from the apiaries. And then I'll just run this over and connect it to the apiaries. Uh, and honestly, I might even bring these pipes, uh, I might bring them out a little wider. Uh, and kind of come around this because I don't need anything over in the apiary area uh, through my main network. Uh, and we're actually going to start having some visible pipes soon. Just these I want under the floor because I don't want a bunch of clutter on my bottom floor. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to show you that because uh, that's actually a pretty big change to our, our bee line. And uh, right now pretty much all the honey is going into making power. So... Because we need to address power. We need to address honey too. So. But now we have drawer controllers. So I'm happy. Uh, and you know. Since the last update. Something I was curious about. Since the last update. They made it so larva can drop from bees. Aha. Oh and look at that. With big fortune. We actually just doubled up. And got two British zombie larvas. Which we can turn these into British zombies. That are already in a jar. 
So there we go. We got two British zombies. So that is really, really nice. I'm not ready to run British zombies. I just wanted them. So that larva thing, especially since it's fortunable like that, it's uh, or lootingable. Uh, that's actually really, really nice. Oh, it actually means we could probably double and triple and quadruple our kitty bays. Even though they can't be bred, that actually makes it way easier to duplicate bees than breeding even. But yeah, so I'm still kind of in the middle of things, but I was editing the footage and I realized it's pretty much wrapping up point. We're not going to have any time this episode, um, but that's fine. Uh, you know, we don't really have time to start another project, but that's okay. Uh, but next episode, we're going to, like I said, be doing a bit with automation and we'll be doing a bit, uh, probably touch on power a little bit uh, and doing a small touch on storage. It's kind of a big mechanic that we're going to be using for some of our storage i think um, i think it'll work i should, probably should test it before i just go for it <laughs> so I'm, i might test it before so it may change but in in my head i think it's going to work really really cool so anyways anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the episode if you did as always be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.